Hey everybody, what is up? Dave here coming back to you with a brand new video on the channel and I was kind of inspired to make this video by Racing Gamer Slovenia who has a very cool video series on his experience with Racing Rivals and kind of giving some history on the game at the same time. But one thing I noticed is really left out in that video series is even when he talks about the fall of Racing Rivals, he never mentions the exploitation of the game. And that actually did have a big role, admittedly. I'm sorry. I don't know how many times I can say I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> admittedly, that had somewhat of an impact on why the game shut down. Now, it wasn't every reason the game shut down, because by Racing Rivals 6.0, we weren't actually able to mod the game anymore until at least like 6.3 or 6.4. But I wanted to go over some of the mods and features and things that help the game hurt the game mostly hurt the game i'm sorry and you know when was the first exploit publicly released what was the worst exploit to hit the game uh what were the visual exploits that everybody seemed to actually be okay with versus what exploits did people absolutely hate my guts for why did somebody threaten me with a literal gun on the web forums for Racing Rivals? Yes, that happened. They put my username and my name written on a piece of paper with a literal gun pointed at the piece of paper. That person is actually, I think, deceased now uh, of cancer. I'm going to keep my sense of humor out of this. I'm, he was kind of a dick anyway. Anyway... I want to go in and just talk about it. And luckily, I still have the whole entire spreadsheet here to kind of use as a guide for this video. But what was the very first exploit to publicly release for Racing Rivals? Now, first of all, trivia for you, Racing Rivals was not originally called Racing Rivals. It was originally called Fueled Racing. And my proof for that is right here on the server cdn.fueled.cgames.com that was the actual cdn server on uh whatchamacallit this is for 7.3.0 there's all the assets for some of the stuff calipers cars as you can see it's a unity 3d file i can't really do anything with that uh scenes i don't think there's anything i can do in there actually assets i can but as you can see there's a whole ton of stuff in here because this is an emulated server that I could kind of run on a modify for your server basically how to do it um, but I don't have the PHP file here I don't think oh I was looking for these files who wants a video of me playing racing rivals in 2023 Leave your comments down below. Anyway, and I'll even make an explanation of how to. Uh, although you probably won't be able to do it. Anyway, the very first exploit to ever release for Racing Rivals publicly that we largely missed was created because of a jailbreak tool called Flex 3. What Flex allows you to do is basically reverse engineer the code of an app and create a dynamic library. As you can see here, you would create a patch. You would then decompile the executable, see some of the uh, memory tweaks that you could do. You could see the variables of things you could tweak, and then you would go in and modify those things. So the first thing that people ever found was number of perfect shifts. Later on in the game, you could only have a max of 12, and you would get a small money boost from that. For some odd reason, it was 12. I don't know why because there was no car in the game that I think had more than seven or eight gears. But you never even got to those gears anyway. Maybe the max was six. I don't remember. I don't know if we had Bugatti Veyrons. I don't think we did. I'm joking. But that was the first thing people figured out. They could edit on jailbreakable devices on day one of Racing Rivals release. They used Flex on a jailbroken device to do it. 
what did they set it to? What was the big difference between the Android version of setting it to 12 and the iOS version on day one? I think you can take a guess. They set it to a million. Now, <laughs> I went through and I did find one of the old web forums for Android. I can't find the forum post anymore for iOS for day one's money bug. But that was pretty devastating for day one to have millions upon millions of dollars funneled into your game out of nowhere that you weren't planning on being there. Granted, I feel like in some ways it did help as far as the economy of the game just have a nice boost right off the bat. But at the same time, they did remove a lot of the bugged money, pretty much as much as they could. And then things went back to normal because they patched it very quickly. Mostly because at that time, I was still playing nice. Admittedly. I'm sorry. Um, someone needs to put a counter in my comments of how many times I say I'm sorry. Anyway, I actually got in contact with, I believe it was Sesco, told him about it, and he went and told an admin because at the time, actually even still to this day, he was very close to the development team of Racing Rivals, so if I told him something that was exploitable and like they need to patch it, he could go tell them very quickly and they would do it pretty much on the spot. But later on, when VIP mod started to start, as you can see, version 3.3.5, VIP mods... Turbocharger always active during a race. Guess what? It didn't do anything. Supercharger active during the race. Guess what? It didn't do anything. Unlimited daily videos for rewards. That did work. Ignore launch states. That did work. So basically that was a way to just, boom, you launch with a perfect launch. Boost always active even if you didn't purchase. True. That was something I found. So let's... Let's count how many of these features I created and they tried to claim they did. Credits, truth mods. No, not true. I created this one, this one, this one, this one, this one. No engine stress, no engine damage. Insane group, uh, grip, cheat detection removed. That didn't do anything. Always perfect launch. I did that. And slow computer. I created that. All of these I created. This was the why there were so many problems with me and this website, uh, Mr. Android. But that's in the past. So anyway, if you look here, you'll see there were other gem mods and money hacks. There were there was the money mod with race a campaign race, lose the race, win the cash anyway. That was an APK mod. I said it so I don't remember exactly how I created this one, but somewhere in there, there were two variables for winning a race. And if you set one to win, but the other to lose, it would tell the server you lost the race, but you would still get the money for it. So you could race that race over and over and over and over and over and over again, basically just bought it. And it would just farm money, kind of like the old school 1320 challenge, uh, APOC and Revo hacks. Unlimited money two added the feature of the AI running 5.5 second race times, which was the fastest anything in the game could run without an auto foul, making it impossible to win the race. Also added always perfect launch reward, five perfect shift award, and the cash as if you won the race. So you're gaining quite a bit of money, especially if you were able to do this on like the fourth race of the final race at the end of the game. Unlimited gems. I actually had an exploit for this as well, but iOS device and an Android device on the same account. I never knew how this one worked. What in the heck are my cats doing? Anyway, I heard a bunch of noise from my bathroom and the only things awake right now are my cats and me. But there was an unlimited gem bug that I found where you needed two APKs and the daily uh, daily login collective item things. You would install one APK, tap that you didn't collect the daily rewards, install the other APK that had the same app signature, collect the daily reward, but it would tell the server you didn't, 
and then install the other APK and just loop it and you would get basically unlimited gems. Unlimited daily videos, very simple thing. You could just see how many videos you could watch, but after a certain point, it was controlled by the server and it just wouldn't send you videos anymore. Turbo uh, and Supercharger activated, never really did anything. It just played the audio for it. Um, tournament speed hack. Hack modified the HP increase, torque increase, and gravity variables to make cars run basically zero second race times, which caused major issues in tournaments. Now patched as you DQ with gravity and all that checked. Uh, street credit gem hack. This was another one that I made. So basically it just modified your street credit to a million and one. You would run 10 races and just get all the sponsor goals. That's all you had to do. It wasn't many gems, but it was gems. Stay in room after a pink sleep uh, loss. This was one I actually didn't know I created, very similar to force paint, which we'll go over in a moment when we get up there. Uh, basically, what would happen is you were able to keep your car even though you lost a pink slip race, and you could just duplicate your car over and over. You would send races to yourself after you lost the race, and it would just duplicate the car over and over. A uh, slow computer car, if you wanted to make things very easy, you could just win very quickly. If you use a jailbroken device and app slices, you could run multiple accounts. I knew about that. The RPM idle hack. This basically set your RPM idle to the perfect launch RPM, and you would just launch. Done. But when you combined it with auto launch, you were basically unbeatable because then you just had to use perfect shifting. Um, randomized unlimited boost. This randomized the amount of boost you had to keep it from being detected that you had a, uh, basically a forced amount of boost uh, that would just stay frozen at like 69 forever or something. No HP reduction. HP reduction would basically occur when you would get engine damage. We could set it to zero and also just do no engine damage and no cars considered unique. A very interesting thing, this was part of the force paint hack where the game didn't think the car was special because unique cars would be like turf cars, crate cars, uh, unpaintable pre-wrapped cars. If you set them all to think they were normal, it would just let you paint it anyway. The money gem and free car multi-hack. This was something very interesting. It required two APKs. One would tell the server you didn't complete the goal. Oh, hey, this is exactly the thing I was talking about. Um, Minimum race bets set to a dollar. This was a lot of fun. People would not know what to do if they received a $1 race. And likewise, they wouldn't know what to do if they received a $50 million race because originally the minimum was 100 and the maximum was a million. Instant part install, exactly what it sounds like. It would just instantly install your part instead of uh, waiting for the timer to go down or using gems to quickly install your parts bothered me that the thingy was there. Insane Grip, exactly what it sounds like. This was found before I actually had a device that could easily play the game. Infinite NOS, exactly what it sounds like. So you could use smaller bottles, they weighed less, you were faster. Ghost Shifting, I don't know if this is actually the two guys that found it. I still talk to Joe all the time. Maybe I'll ask him and I'll like leave a comment down below or see if he wants to. Ooh. I don't think that's going to redirect. Yeah, I don't expect that to redirect. Probably just to a YouTube video of how it worked. Basically, ghost shifting was exactly how it sounds. On 7,000 RPM, shift your gear to 3. And then on 7,000 RPMs, again, shift to 6. Only works with macro recorders after they patched it. So basically what this would do is it would save about 100 milliseconds sometimes on some cars and you would just instantly shift so you would be a lot faster actually because you're not having that lag time of hey I'm shifting gears. You would just it would instantly shift to a higher gear and skip one gear that would be pointless to otherwise go into. The gem purchase hack this was an iOS thing. Um, and it also worked on Android, but the iOS one came first. Later came the Gmail one, where if you set your 
country somewhere else and then use like a GPS spoofer, you could actually get gems for cheaper because of just looking like you're in a very poor country. Force paint. Oh, force paint. I had a video of this. So, history of force paint. A lot of people actually really liked this feature and tried to dumb it down and like hide it from the community even though I was the one that found it. Uh, I handed the APK over to a certain somebody that played the game very often who would also then sometimes forward it for me to the admin so they could patch my APK mods because yes I was selling my APKs but also yes I was giving them to the admins at the same time for my exploits to get patched because it was fun for me to exploit hunt no matter what I did. So basically what force paint was was as you can see this car is a a uh, unpaintable car if you went into customize and look through paints you couldn't paint it if you went into your inventory though as you can see there's the matte black paint here basically by setting the car to not be unique and also um telling the dll code under inventory set this to always true set this to always true item type set it to paint basically just setting everything to true you could then paint the car even though you weren't supposed to be able to now it never worked on things like rims and never worked on it worked only for like one or two versions of racing rivals with underglow but it worked for a very long time with uh paints and it was that easy to do it honestly was just install an apk and then go to your inventory and paint it and there were people that were trying to discredit me the founder of force paint and just say that that's not how it works but it's entirely false it's that's exactly how it worked so that's why i donated an apk over to vgu sesco for racing rivals underground to just show that like hey this is how it works admins are going to patch it soon but realistically they didn't patch it until almost like version 6.4 because it even worked during the il to cpp early days so who knows what they were really thinking um, DNF, DQ, disconnect, tie removal. So they tried to add an auto file system and we just removed it by nopping all the code. Nopping is basically setting things to null. It's not the same as zeros. It's literally null. Like nothing is there. So it just skips over that code entirely because there is no code there. Custom gear ratios. This was so much fun to mess with, but it made cars so fast. So like the Nissan GTR R35 was in the game. And that was a car that was terrible to drive in the game because the ratios were so short for stock that as soon as you tried to max it out on horsepower, if you maxed it out, you would be at the rev limit in sixth gear by the time I think you were like 800 feet down the track. So if I lowered the final drive, it made the car way too fast. But with custom gear ratios, because it made the car too fast, then you would actually get auto fouls, which is where this came in handy. But I believe auto fouls were actually patched before I did this. I could have done this a long time prior, but I just didn't. Custom chat commands. This was a way for me to hide features from people. I was basically using the chat function to like put in my own code. So you would do like, I had a really cool one where you could set custom colors for underglow. So I do like slash UG color, and then you would do a hex code. So like three, 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 three. And that would make your hex color dark charcoal well that wouldn't look very good now would it 
So that would make, like, your underglow gray if you made it all A's or something. But, like, you could just Google a hex color sheet and set your colors. Uh, command, controlled hacks, that's the same as this, basically, to trigger hacks. Cheat detection removal didn't do much of anything. Chat spammer was my thing for f uh, free APKs. Once in a while, it would randomly spam the chat, but it would hide your username. It still had a high ban rate because even if it hid the username visually, if they went into the database or whatever their admin tools were for watching chat, it would still detect and they would still see the ID for the account, and that's not something I could change. Now, these were glitches. Uh, car cloning. Car cloning, there were a ton of car clones. It was a little insane. So this was the very first one, which I'm surprised this video is even still up. Um, I never understood how to do it. Oh, this is from Sesco. He was actually sent this video publicly, and then he was like, I want this freaking patched. I'm posting it, no matter what. So basically, this person figured out that if you exited the game at a certain time during those tournaments, and then logged back into the game... It would somehow duplicate the car. I never personally got this to work. Which is whatever. But if you could just get it to reload your garage, there were ways to get your car duplicated doing this. Now it goes and loads the race. You'd send a race to somebody, it would bug out, make you reload your account. Because they had detections for certain things, and if it made you reload the entire account, and you did things at certain times, so like he's showing, just reconnect, reforce it to load your garage. And he's going into multiplayer. Racing Rivals was great. Let's be real. Reloads the account. Oh wow, this is a two minute video. Almost three, actually. You just had, there was a very specific timing about it. And I think that's why it didn't work for a lot of people, but this is exactly what I mean by this game. A lot of the stuff in this game was just timing-based stuff where, oh, if I put my phone into airplane mode during this specific function, it'll let me do this or that. And now it's going to let him send the race. Now, I don't know if he was sending this race to himself or some random, but you go decline the race... It, like, glitched out the game. And he didn't have that car prior to running the race. But what he did was he used an AI to steal their car, basically, and it duplicated the AI's car. So, Car Cloning 2 was cloning via pink slip in a tournament, which was very similar to this, just a different method. Boost HP increase. Now, the best way to explain this is 1320 Challenge. 1320 Challenge uses a percentage system to figure out max HP and boost. I'm not going to say what the specific variable is in 1320 Challenge because that'll lead to being, uh, people being able to maybe exploit and not have to build their cars, which is a very pointless thing in that game. If, uh, let's say, 33% increase. Um... That's, you know, you have 100 HP times 0.33 plus 100. There you go. You suddenly have 133 horsepower. And then boost adds on top of it. But boosting HP increase, we would set it to like 300%. So you'd suddenly have 400 horsepower or whatever in a car that's supposed to only have 160 max. Boost always active, exactly what it sounds like. Uh, body kit, turf, and crate cars. This is another thing that I found by accident. 
I found a variable that let it load the body kits and parts that were otherwise hidden and only supposed to be visible to certain players because they like want them as tournament parts. And so the biggest one was the dino kit for the Nissan GT R R33. I didn't know this feature existed, but what ended up happening is I just figured out a way to install body kits on any part, whether that body kit part was supposed to be purchasable by everyone or not. It just happened to work. Now, auto shift, auto racer, auto NOS, and auto launch, exactly what they sound. Auto launch and auto NOS usually went hand in hand. And the discovery of auto launch was actually completely by accident because I was looking under abstract race and I just understood how Unity 3D worked as a whole. There's a start, there's step, there's update, and stop as far as functions. As you can see, there is a step here, and there's update here, and there's like physics time. As you can see, you just tell it to press the buttons. When the light goes green, it's going to launch your vehicle. Easy as that. That's how I made auto launch. And then later on, when I had auto shift, Auto shift was just an expansion of this code, basically taking gear shifting code and detecting where the rev limit was or whatever RPM your car's uh, currently at, and then it would shift at whatever RPM you want it set to. There actually was a 3.0 of Auto Racer. Auto Racer would auto launch your car, auto NOS, and then auto shift at specific RPMs set in a database that my mod would connect to. And I would usually get those variables from tutorials on YouTube or people just telling me what they were if there was a specific car they wanted to race, a specific, eh, whatever. There was not really, I never had a good way. I guess I could have done like text on screen. Um, but there, I never personally had really a good way to say like, hey, it's this car. So you just kind of had to know these are what cars are in Auto Racer V3 and then just only race those cars, which generally it was only the popular ones. I think the biggest hack I ever had for Auto Racer V3 was 38 cars, 38 or 40. Um, always team leader with visual, didn't matter. Always perfect launch result, always perfect shifts, and all rooms allow pinks, all rooms allow betting. Very confused people on that one. All cars have underglow. Sometimes you could only view it on certain cars. Some stuff let you do it with the inventory force install. And then the any color was just a hex color randomized string. That's all it was. But Racing Rivals, it was a heavily exploited game because there was not a lot known about the security of mobile gaming and things like that. And when you hear oh, the Facebook version was shut down because there were too many exploits and bots. The Facebook version was shut down because Glue Mobile makes mobile games. They didn't want PC games. That's also why the ownership of Cartown switched over to Miniclip. They didn't want to run PC-based games. That's pretty much it. So, what was the worst, most hazardous hack to the community auto racer and auto launch in my opinion that basically destroyed the game because unless you had a perfect launch you couldn't win the race uh auto launch and auto nos combined with unlimited boost and then the one that people seem to enjoy the most even though they were like oh that came because of an apk mod force paint I can't think of a single player in Racing Rivals history that was m into collecting cars on a major level that never had a force paint car. But that's just me. Now, like I've always said, I'm older now, I'm a little wiser. This is why I don't hack in mod games anymore, because I see the damage it causes to the communities. Somebody is doing donuts at 2 a.m. outside my house. It sounds like... Jesus Christ, kids, go to sleep. You're not cool. Um, yeah, I saw. I can see the damage it caused now looking back, like how blind I was to it and how much of an asshole I was. 
but it was still a big part of the game and a big reason why there were some changes to the game, why there were, um, why the game was so hurt. And honestly, the Android version was the most exploited, hands down. So, I mean, at the end of the day, like I said, I have the ability to emulate the server. It's all right here. You just need Charles Web Debugger and to edit the global metadata. But do I really put the time into editing this game and trying to make it playable again? I don't know if it's worth it. This is just like some basics, like initializing the game. As you can see, I do have all of this um, cracked. I can make these hashes and all that and do all that stuff by myself. All of this does load. This is the legacy garage and then the new garage. If I can generate a hex, I can create custom garages and stuff like that. But I don't know if I have the knowledge personally to remake this server. But we do have the basics for at least trying. Because as you can see, I did save all this info. This is the file that causes the biggest issue, though. As you can see, I did save a lot of stuff. So if there is somebody that wants to try to do this, it's doable. I just don't have the knowledge. But if we use Charles Web Debugger, I can replay these responses. Or Fiddler, I think I can do it too. And actually play the game again using the Facebook version. Wait, no, Facebook version doesn't work. I have to use the Android version. But we do have the ability. I have a PHP file somewhere to basically make this work. So anyway, I'll talk to you guys later. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Peace out.